So I've been hanging out in Discords a lot, and a lot of people are asking, you know, most people have Windows installed, and they're asking, you know, how can I get Chia set up on Linux, assuming that Linux is a little bit more performant, and they're able to get a little bit more plotting out of the system. Uh, so today's video is going to be basically walking you through how to get that done, and what needs to happen in order to get yourself up and running on Chia on Linux. So if that's interesting to you, stay tuned. Okay, so we got a Linux machine up, clean Ubuntu desktop version with nothing on it. We've just simply just installed the system. So first thing we're gonna do, we're just gonna run an update, which is important to make sure that we have the latest packages. We're gonna check through that, should be pretty quick. Great, that says that our sources are up to date and have the latest versions of the packages. Now we're gonna see and run an up upgrade, see what needs to be done there. Turns out everything's great. So I've already installed Git here, but if you don't have Git installed, what you'd be simply doing is this. And then dash Y just basically lets you skip any, any yes prompt or anything like that, which we have installed. Great. So the next thing we need to do is simply clone the latest repository of the Chia blockchain tool. So we'll get clone and I already have this on my clipboard. So we're going to paste it in here and that's basically downloading the source for which we're going to be using to install Chia. As you can see, we're installing a bunch of Python dependencies for, for the Chia plotting uh, tool. Um, it's actually kind of cool that uh, mainstream crypto is using Python. Um, so the next bit here is you're gonna see we're telling us to run dash activate, which basically sets up uh, an environment for our Python. As you can see, we installed a bunch of other things prior and we wanna keep those separate from the rest of our system because our system also relies on, on Python. As you can see, give it the name VM. If you see in there, uh, traditionally, uh, the VM folder is where all the activate code is. And as you can see, there's bins, which were, would contain some binaries that we need. As you can see, the Chia Farmer, the Harvester are all being started from a Python script. And these binaries are being copied into our virtual env. So what the virtual env does, it gives a way to, for us to access these commands from the command line while we're active. So if we were to just simply go back a couple directories, you know, we're not on the same path as there, we were to call uh, Chia-help, or dash H rather would give us a bunch of commands. That's it possible because we're in the virtual env. If we deactivate it and run Chia help again, it's not gonna know what the hell Chia means. Like, what is it that you're talking about? Which is why it's important to always have this activated, which puts those binaries and the associated libraries on path. So then when you run things like Chia-H, you'll get an output, which is what people tend to get confused about. This is necessary. Um, I personally rename mine to something else, but if you're not familiar with it, it's fine. Simply CD, and they made this convenience function, like this activate, they've made a script for you to call it, so you don't have to go deeper into the VM directory. So once that's done and running, you can simply have access to Chia, as I showed earlier, with the dash help command, and then you're good to go. So this stuff is basically used to power things like your, your, your plot managers and, and your other tools that are on top of Chia. Today, we're gonna to be just setting up Chia, to be able to run. So the next thing is we're gonna install the GUI. So we're gonna go cha install dash GUI. And that's gonna install the GUI and it's gonna install node and all the dependencies to run that. So that just take a second. And once that's up and running, we should be able to get the GUI started. While it's doing that, let me show you kind of what we're gonna get set up after this. So SWAR is a, manager, a plot manager that I use to make sure my plots are constantly happening. So the idea with Chia is that first first you get some plots, which requires uh, the Chia miner to be constantly plotting. Once you have those plots, you move them over to a farmer or to a different disk, long-term storage disk, which you can then farm and handle requests from the network for particular uh, proofs. If you find the proof, you end up winning a reward. So the more plots you have, the more likelihood you'll win a proof. And the quicker you can plot, the more plots, the more farm farming or plots you can have in the long run. So plot speed is pretty crucial here early on. So the way the normal standard Chia tool works is that it simply asks you to select how many plots you want and you can set up a queue, but that queue is finite. It's not gonna start up new ones once it's done. So with some tools like SWAR do, they set you up to have uh, the plots constantly running and, and allows you to, uh, walk away from the computer, and, but knowing that you'll always be plotting and copying over your plots to the correct directories once they're done. Um, this is a great tool. I'm going to be having a video about this next time. Uh, let me know if you guys have different uh, 
plot tools that you like, uh, plot managers that you like. I'm, I'm a big fan of Swar and I've found it to be quite nice actually. So let's see what's going on here. Still not done, so we'll give it another second here to continue. Awesome. Now that that's done, we're simply going to CD into the Chia directory, Chia, Chia blockchain GUI directory. We're then going to run npm run electron. And electron is just a framework for running Chrome based web apps within its own little window. So Spotify, Slack, familiar tools like that, they do a similar thing. So we're just going to get this going and it's going to launch the GUI for Chia. Great, as you can see, the wallet has come up now and it's just gonna connect. So we're gonna go and create a new private key. So as you can see here, this is really important. Uh, if you're one of the lucky few who have mined some uh, Chia coin, basically you wanna keep track of this. This is a new wallet for me, so I'm not too worried about sharing this, but this is extremely important for you to copy down and save and not to share it with anyone you don't trust. Uh, we're going to click through here and click next. So as you can see, the full node status. So you can see that we're connecting to a bunch of other nodes, trying to dock down, pull down the blockchain. Right now, I think we've just crossed 19 exabytes, which is insane to think about. Um, it's syncing right now. So if you're really having syncing issues, you may want to look into your ports on your router and open up this particular port, map it from internal to external to 8444. Um, you won't be able to farm until you're synced up. So if you're thinking about starting or, or curious, get the node set up, get it running, let it sync. And then once you have everything sunk, you can then figure out how you're going to lay out all your plots. So that's what this page is describing. The next page is your wallet, your balance, lets you create and receive transactions, send receiving addresses, or sorry, create receiving addresses, or, or send and start new transactions to send to your friends. Um, plotting. This is the plot page. Basically, if you add a plot here, it'll give you a various GUI. You want to keep it at K32, which is the strength now. Um, each of these gives you, uh, you know, a total size of one gigabyte when it's fully plotted, but it needs about 240 at peak during the various phases when you're plotting. Um, you can select the number of plots you want. You can choose to plot in parallel, so you can have multiple plots going all at once. You can also specify the disk. Now, the disk is important here because the disk is where you want you want your fast disk here, your NVMEs for your plotting machine. And that's where you'd so you'd mount it on Linux and then point it at that thing. We'll get into that in the next tutorial when we're using Swar Plot Manager, but it's important to understand where these are going. And the final directory is where the farming is going to happen. This is when you want this to be your, you know, strong, slow disk. So your spinning hard drives, your eight terabyte drives, you want to put once the thing is done plotting, you want to copy it over to that for its final resting, resting place where it sits in this farm for long term. Once that's all set up, the farmer page will then look up and see that any completed plots are here. And once your node is fully sunk, you'll then accept and receive challenges from the network to see if you have any of those hashes on your system. And there you have it. The last tab basically is your keys and you basically don't wanna show that, share that with anybody. Uh, you, you click the one that you have. I fortunately have two keys here, uh, but the, the idea is the same. You can have multiple keys. You can switch between them without any issue here. Uh, you can also you know, back up and whatnot, but that's, that's outside of the scope of this video. Uh, it'll start syncing and then you're set. And then you have a fully running node with Chia and then you're ready to go. So if you guys are interested in figuring out how to do this consistently without having to constantly come back to your machine, check out my next video where we're going to be talking about Swar Plot Manager and uh, various other plot managers to get things going. If you guys are interested in setting up Mechaneris for having your farm box, let me know in the comments. If you guys are interested for that, I can set up a video for that too. Good luck and happy farming.